my friend, the late and great Ted O. Gunderson, former head of the FBI in L.A., Dallas, and Memphis, requested of me and of his daughter that an autopsy was made of his body. And I thought, well, we had discussed that during his life. If anything were to happen to him, he wanted to find out what made him die. So for six, seven weeks, he laid in cold storage waiting for an autopsy. I don't know if it's, if it's come out formally, but uh, it has been done. You said that with his fingers becoming colored or purple, is that a sign of anything? Uh, yes, uh, that's one of the signs of arsenic poisoning. And uh, several individuals in the past have uh, turned into a black mummy as a result of acute arsenic poisoning, uh, such as Lenin and uh, the John Wilkes Booth double. Uh, but I had Ted under some type of treatment for a number of years uh, with a certain special diet, rich in sulfur, rich foods, to neutralize the arsenic. And uh, as a result, uh, his fingernails, which had been dark purple black, had cleared up. Uh, but he was very busy in fighting the enemy and uh, he was receiving 30 phone calls a day and as a result he did not go down to seek the treatment of alternative medical clinics which would have subjected him to a process of chelation and other therapies to eliminate all the arsenic. Uh, one of the common results of arsenic poisoning uh, is cancer of the bladder. How do you get arsenic poison well, unless somebody wanted to kill you? Well, uh, it depends on, it can be occupational, a person working in mining, uh, a person working in the chemical industry. I don't consider him gone, he's still here for what he's done. Ted Gunderson, former head of the FBI in Los Angeles, Dallas, and Memphis. He was opposed to the installation of smart meters, which we referred to as murder meters, and he's opposed to the death dumps that have been going on in this country. In fact, here in Covina, California, if you take a look at the sky, there's the residue of death dumps. That's correct. Nanoparticulates, aluminum, oxides, sulfur, hexafluorides, strontium, barium, etc. He was concerned that the FBI and uh, the CIA and those government agencies which uh, control this country and are now trying to control the world and establish a global government are poisoning us. In the background you'll be you'll hear a machine they're taking off smart meters in this neighborhood. You know Deborah Tavares. Yes I do. And very she, intelligent pleasant woman. Oh absolutely. Her husband is out there pulling these smart meters off and putting on analog meters. Ted was opposed to all of this. I spoke at the um, Eagle Forum in Long Beach, or the Long Beach Eagle Forum. You were there. Yes, I was. Um, they're a bit upset because I talked about the truth. I asked, I said, do you want to hear the truth? Do you want me, to, want me to go according to the program? I was speaking for Ted Gunderson. He couldn't make it. He was in the hospital. I stepped up and stood in his place. I remember that, and I appreciate it, too, uh, the way you handled it. You told the truth. That's the important thing. Does the truth upset people when you talk about those things which they feel incapable of changing? Uh, I believe so. Uh, some people are uh, restricted to a certain viewpoint and uh, they want to stress that viewpoint and they don't want to have broken any interference with, with that viewpoint. Uh, however, uh, I, like you, yourself, uh, feel that uh, the truth should be told at the opportune time. And uh, Ted would have probably said, I'm sure he would have said the same thing as, uh, that you said. Well, I felt, you know, speaking for him and knowing him as I did, that um, he would address those things regardless of whose cage he rattled. He felt that possibly. 
he would be poisoned. Somebody would try to take him out. He, he'd mentioned several attempts on his life. Uh, there's been a couple on mine, at least in so far as the gunshots are concerned. When he finally passed, and I felt that he probably would, but we had thumbs up. We felt maybe we could get through this. I was at the hospital with him at the very end. He tried a lot of various things. He wanted to have an autopsy, and then when the autopsy uh, was done, we don't know the exact results of it, but uh, did you see or do you know what was happening to his body? Was he turning? Uh, yes, uh, shortly after uh, death, uh, within a matter of a couple of hours, uh, he started to turn black, uh, particularly in his face, his hands, and his feet. And this is a characteristic uh, sign of uh, arsenic poisoning. Uh, at death, as the cells disintegrate, the blood cells disintegrate, uh, arsenic is released from the body stores. And all poisons are stored in the fatty tissues of the body and uh, also are concentrated in the liver, which is the detoxifying organ of, the, of our bodies. Uh, as the arsenic is released, uh, from its uh, from its uh, complex uh, binding to the tissues, uh, it combines with the sulfur uh, from the disintegrated cells to form arsenic sulfide, which is a black uh, has a black color. So he had all appearances of being poisoned by arsenic poisoning. Correct, correct. Which could lead to cancer of the bladder. Well. I strongly feel that uh, the arsenic caused this cancer of the bladder. That is one of the common side effects of uh, arsenic poisoning. He had poisoning. his bladder removed, as you know. Correct. And, and his... It was replaced uh, with a portion of his intestine. And then within about four months after, they noted that there was a spread of the tumor outside of the bladder. So Ted was most likely poisoned. Yes, oh, it very definitely was. In fact, about seven or eight years ago, I had diagnosed him with arsenic poisoning because I had met him at a conference and noted that his fingernails were black, uh, particularly at the base, dark purple black. And so I told him what to do and... Uh, was this due to his attack upon the American Illuminati? Yes, very definitely. And uh, also his attack upon the CIA, which is being controlled by the Illuminati. The CIA is the enforcement arm of the CFR, is it not? Correct. That's correct. His investigations led to the city investigation of the McMartin Nursery School. And he had also investigated the Captain McDonald case, where he was convicted of murdering his wife and children, which he did not. But Captain McDonald was uh, attempting to uh, uh, break up the drug ring at the military base that uh, was uh, shipping cocaine, bags of cocaine in the body cavities of the dead soldiers. That would be out of Vietnam? Yes, yes, very much so. That would be coming from the Golden Triangle, Correct. the Kun Sa operation? Correct. So he got the enmity of the certain people in the CIA and the military and uh, uh, others who were using the drug traffic as a means of uh, generating funds in order to stir up revolutions and so on and so forth. So the CIA, rather than stopping drugs, uh, is importing them from Afghanistan, which is the largest heroin uh, producing area in the world today. Correct, correct, very much so. And they use it for their black bag operations. Many years ago, Congress had uh, refused to give money to the CIA unless they listed for what purposes that, that they were to be, to be used. And so the CIA started getting involved in the drug uh, racket. So this is a, a way of funding black operations? Correct, correct. In your opinion, was Ted Gunderson murdered by an agency of this government? In your opinion, what would be your guess? My speculative guess would be that uh, yes. And, uh, he explained to me that he found arsenic dust in his apartment, uh, on his table, on his chairs, and in the air conditioning duct, and also inside his locked car. 
on the steering wheel, on the seats. So someone who has the ability to enter secretly uh, a car in an apartment house and uh, do all that without leaving any fingerprints uh, indicates uh, uh, someone uh, high up in the uh, in the circles, so to speak. We were doing a film on Reichstag in 95, uh, two years before the World Trade Center had been attacked. We had uh, a little bit of private conversation about uh, who did the first World Trade Center bombing. The FBI had an informant in among the terrorist group on the uh, World Trade Center car bombing February 26, 1993. And Salam, the former Egyptian officer, 43 years old, was commissioned by the terrorists, he was one of the terrorists, to put the bomb together uh, for the bombing of the World Trade Center. And he went to his FBI superiors, he said, we're going to use a dummy bomb, aren't we? And they said, no, we're going to use a real bomb. Well, Ted, wasn't this guy a terrorist hired by the United States government, hired by the FBI, in fact, did they not, in fact, give him monies to buy the bomb which went into the World Trade Center? He was uh, an informant for the FBI against the terrorists, and he wore a body mic on their instructions when he met with the terrorists, and unknown to the FBI, he wore a body mic when he met with the FBI. And fortunately for him, otherwise he probably would have been prosecuted himself. This came out during the trial. And it appeared in the uh, October 23, 1993 uh, New York Times, this information I'm telling you right now. And so he was told uh, to put the bomb together by the terrorists. Uh, the FBI told him, no, we're going to use a real bomb, we're not going to use a dummy bomb. And the FBI not only furnished the ingredients for the done and knew in advance that they were going to bomb the World Trade Center car bombing with the car bomb, they furnished the ingredients for the bomb. Well, this is a sting operation, wasn't it? It's a sting operation, yes. But nevertheless, the sting operations can go down without using real bombs. There were six people uh, died in that uh, bombing. I think a, th a thousand people were injured and a half million dollars in damage. Half billion dollars. Half billion? Half billion dollars. And there's just uh, absolutely no excuse for this. But uh, that's all part of the, uh, the ploy by the government, this covert uh, the government criminal enterprise, I call it rogue government criminal enterprise. Uh, it's all part of the ploy by them. Uh, that After that, of course, with, uh, the, uh, the car bombing of 93, Oklahoma City bombing, and then uh, 911, and then these all, all these terrorist acts were designed in order to set up Homeland Security, pass the Patriot Act, and take away many of our constitutional rights and civil liberties. So Ted was most likely poisoned. Yes, oh, it very definitely was. In fact, about seven or eight years ago, I had diagnosed him with arsenic poisoning because I had met him at a conference and noted that his fingernails were black, uh, particularly at the base, dark purple black, 